Who's Got Game is a party game from Ark's Mind and Neil Strauss, who's the best-selling author of the book, The Game. In Who's Got Game, players compete to earn points by interacting with the other players and acting out the game's script cards. It supports four or more players and plays out in about a half hour to an hour. So players begin Who's Got Game by choosing a nickname and a partner with whom they're going to be doing a lot of the challenges in the game. Also, one of the players will be chosen as the scorekeeper. Each round, one player takes on the role of the leader and draws one of the script cards. They're going to follow any directions written on it and read it out loud to the other players. Now each of the script cards resolves a little differently and they're going to have opportunities for the leader, their partner, or any of the other players to earn points. You can also lose points by failing to complete a challenge or refusing to participate in a script. At the end of the game, the player who has the most points wins. The script cards are divided into 10 different categories. Each of them focuses on a different aspect of social interaction. And all of the ideas and the situations on these cards are based highly on Neil Strauss's books, The Game, and Rules of the Game, which are his experiences in the pickup artist community, and they instruct men how to pick up women. So cold reading and connection cards have players answer personality test style questions or talk about their lives, and then get points for matching answers with the leader. Rapport cards have them talk about their preferences or their interests, and then the leader tries to match the answer to the player. Demonstration of higher value cards have the leader reading other people's handwriting, their palms, or reading body language in order to earn points. Social intelligence cards test different players' knowledge of relationship or sexual trivia by asking true or false questions. Storytelling cards have players either silently act out an assigned situation or tell an entertaining story. Kino cards are physical challenges that can range from silly games to trying to provoke a particular reaction in another player. And conspiracy cards are going to reward you for working very closely with your partner. The last two categories of cards are a little bit different. There are secret cards, which give players secret objectives that are resolved at a later point in the game. And then there are neg cards, which allow you to take points away from other players. So after a round's points have been tallied, the player to the leader's left becomes the new leader. Game's going to continue like this until either every player has had a chance to be the leader twice, or after 12 rounds in a 4-6 to six player game. At this point, it's time for the final challenge. The sand timer gets flipped over, and the players have until it runs out to write down at least one thing said by every other player, and earn points for all their correct answers. Once the points have been tallied after this final round, whoever's got the most wins. So this game is really, really simple, and it's really, really easy to learn. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of Cranium, actually, so it could be a great icebreaker game for a big group of people, as long as it's the right group of people. Unfortunately, I'm not really the right group of people. Uh, this is not a game that me or my friend group I can really see playing. It makes me feel uncomfortable. It's got a really, really high level of sexual content. It's also got a lot of physical contact in it. I know a lot of people who might not feel very comfortable with that level of physical contact with a group of strangers or acquaintances. Um, it's the kind of game that makes me feel like I felt when I was 14 and I had to go over to a group of girls' house and play Truth or Dare and they were all a lot cooler than me. That kind of uncomfortable pit of your stomach feeling. So it's, it's not a game for me. Aside from the pressure that this game can put on some people, there's also that really high sexual content that means you're going to have to filter it because you can't really play this in public. You certainly can't play this with children the way that it's written. You may find that you're tailoring the game to your audience to make sure that nobody feels uncomfortable or that nothing inappropriate happens. It also really lives and dies by its theme. If you're put off by the entire pickup artist ethos or that kind of social interaction doesn't speak to you, then you're not really going to get a lot out of this. On the other hand, if you've read Neil Strauss's stuff, if you're a fan of his work, if you do find the pickup artist scene interesting, if you want to find out more about any of that, it's a really great continuation of the stuff that he's already got out there and you're going to find it interesting and engaging and delivered in a fun new way. It's also really customizable. There's a huge amount of cards. The way they're divided into decks makes it easy to pick and choose how you're gonna set up your game and to tailor it to your audience. It also means there's a massive amount of replay value. You only use about a dozen cards every time you play and there's a huge amount in this game. So if you like it, you can play it over and over without ever getting bored.